focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Welcome to India's Most Responsible Companies, a special series that puts the spotlight on those enterprises that are thinking beyond the bottom line. These are companies that are contributing in some form to the socio-economic development of India. Today our focus is on DBS Bank India that's supporting many social enterprises which are in turn benefiting those who are at the bottom of the pyramid. DBS, a leading financial services group headquartered in Singapore, constantly strives to enhance the banking experience for its customers. But beyond business, DBS also keeps alive its legacy of starting out as a development bank by championing social entrepreneurship in different parts of India. It recognizes and supports promising social sector startups from different verticals that are transforming lives through unique ideas and also engages its employees in giving back to society and making a positive impact. And to tell us more about the CSR and sustainability initiatives at DBS Bank India, we are now joined by its CEO, Surajit Shom. Surajit, welcome to India's Most Responsible Companies. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Let me first begin by asking you, what really is the CSR and uh, sustainability philosophy here at DBS Bank? So uh, if you know the history of DBS Bank, you know the full form of DBS Bank before it changed, its name was Development Bank of Singapore, very closely associated with the 50 years of DBS uh, journey is uh, quite closely linked with Singapore's journey itself. Right. So at the core of DBS's philosophy is, uh, you know, building uh, the, the, uh, the country that Singapore is today. So clearly you can see the purpose, social purpose was very much fundamental mm -hmm. to the setting up of uh, DBS as a bank yeah. and hence it kind of naturally flows into what we do today. So sustainability is a very core uh, DNA for the bank. Right. And you endorse and catalyze the growth of social enterprises in India. Uh, why social enterprises in the first place and how do you really choose them? So social enterprises because uh, we believe that uh, you know grants per se uh, can only go uh, so much. Yeah. What you really need to do is to make things sustainable, mm -hmm. which means whatever you put in must create the momentum which then is taken forward by these enterprises. So what we are really trying to do is to spark ideas and be able to make them self-sustained. And that's why social enterprises, in fact, we've worked with social enterprises over the last seven, eight years, including starting with social entrepreneurs, where we were working with uh, for five years. We tried to get social entrepreneurs to get to scale. Now we are working with scalable social uh, you know, enterprises, which can then take uh, you know, ideas and solve problems, but on a sustainable basis. You're supporting Help Us Green from Kanpur, a social enterprise. Uh, you know, what really made you choose this particular venture and how has your, you know, joining forces with this enterprise really impacted it and increased its potential, so to say? So, you know, it's, it, it's actually a very interesting social entrepreneur, uh, you know, enterprise and entrepreneurs because we, we bring a lot of flowers to temples but we forget what is to be done with them. Mm -hmm. And to be able to recycle them and then make good use of them is an end-to-end -end solution of what is uh, essentially a big wastage problem. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then it provides employment and ability for women to work in that. And there's more than 10,000 tons of flowers have been processed. And mm -hmm. what we now do is the products that they make, we try and bring them back and then use them in what we give to customers and then link them to markets. So that's really what we've been able to do, give them ability to scale Right. and then evacuate their products both to our customers but to a broader market. Right. And the DBS Foundation was launched in 2014. What was the idea with which it was launched? How has it, how has it evolved over the last couple of years? So, you know, uh, D DBS uh, Foundation was kind of a celebration of 50 years of Singapore itself mm -hmm. because 
you know, almost at the same time as we launched the foundation, uh, Singapore completed 50 years. And soon mm -hmm. after that, DBS completed 50 years. So it was a culmination, if you will, of celebrating that. It's been very successful uh, the way we look at it. We've looked at more than 30,000 uh, social enterprises who we have touched in some form or shape, who have either submitted proposals. So every year we get a large number of proposals. And over this period, uh, we've done close to $5 million of uh, you know, um, grants and support mm. to social entrepreneurs. And we work with 300 plus social entrepreneurs and it enabled them to then scale up. Right. And how do you really choose these social enterprises? What are the parameters on which a social enterprise is chosen? And once chosen, how are you helping it scale up? Is it mentorship, funding, of course, as you spoke yeah. about? So we uh, obviously work with uh, partners who help us uh, narrow down uh, the, the social entrepreneurs. So we have a program where we get applications from various social entrepreneurs uh, and enterprises. Uh, then we work with some of our own staff who form the, uh, if you will, the panel who right. work with these social entrepreneurs to evaluate them, both in terms of sustainability, but also in terms of how well they run, whether they have the capability to scale up. Right. So we have few parameters, both in terms of their management, but also what impact they can have uh, going forward. Mm -hmm. And then not only do we provide them with financial resources, we also have uh, a mentorship by well, currently, we have 50 plus senior employees of DBS around the world who are actively mentoring uh, social entrepreneurs and some of the ones that we are working with today. Right. So till what stage do you handhold them? Uh, we have a program formally between 18 to 24 months where we try and help them to get to the next stage. Right. But if you've seen some of the social entrepreneurs, we are now working with them for five, six, seven years where it becomes a bit of a symbiotic relationship. They may or may not require our money but they definitely uh, you know, benefit from the association that we have with them, either in terms of participating. For example, we have the Spark series where we've done a set of uh, you know, programs mm -hmm. where some of these social entrepreneurs have actually then worked with us and formed solutions uh, that then we've taken to our, our customers in terms of our messaging, whether it is replacing plastic or providing sustainable solutions right. like the flower uh, yeah. disposal. Uh, we've worked with them over a long period of time. So there is no defined period where we say this is it, we yeah. won't work. But you know the formal program is 18, 24 months. That's when we provide mentorship. And then they kind of become large enough to uh, sustain it themselves. And that's really the objective. Green Soul from Mumbai, another enterprise that you're supporting. Uh, what made you choose this one? And it's quite a unique idea, I would say, that you know, to recycle used footwear and yeah, then it is, it make is. footwear for underprivileged people. It is quite unique because if you see the end product, you wouldn't realize where they started. Mm -hmm. And I think when, when you see the uh, clip, it tells you what started as effectively something that people uh, generally throw away. We created a product which then has value. And there are a lot of people who need uh, foot, footwear. So in a sustainability perspective, this is probably the perfect example yeah. of what is waste to then end up being something that's really usable and usable in a funky and, and uh, you know, stylish manner. Yeah. So I think that's, uh, that's the reason why it caught our attention. And uh, we find it to be one of the more interesting mm -hmm. uh, projects that we have associated with. This is Shriyans. He wears footwear, he even makes footwear. This is a barefoot child. Here are two, here's a million. It's a disease. Shriyant disapproves. He hates problems. See, hate is too strong a word. Okay, he's a problem solver. Oh, okay. This is Green Soul, co-founded by Ramesh, this guy, along with this guy, yep. I think the number of people that they're reaching today is a multiple of what uh, they had when we started. Mm -hmm. And we think now they're clearly on their own. They don't need our support anymore. And that, to my mind, is the best example of being able to create impact, is when they, if you will, take wings on their own and can fly without the support of a partner like us. Now, at different stages of scaling up, uh, how do DBS Bank services get integrated with uh, the chosen social enterprises? For instance, your banking products or procurement from social enterprises, what sort of services do you try to integrate with them? So our overall sustainability program kind of has different elements to it. One is 
our own business because our business is quite central to society, correct? Banking mm. is in a way, uh, so we practice responsible banking in what we do, what we finance. Uh, so that's one vertical, if you will. Right. Then, uh, as you said, our procurement, our business practices uh, are, are sustainable. What we buy, who we buy from, how do we bring some of the social entrepre entrepreneurs as well as social enterprises that we work with to work with our customers, so help them mm -hmm. to link to uh, customers. And then finally being uh, you know, impactful, as, as we talked about, in providing support for uh, social entrepreneurs to, to get to market. So all three elements are part of our broader strategy, or mm -hmm. three pillars, if you will, of what we are trying to achieve. And would you say that the bank has also significantly gained uh, in terms of business practices? Yeah, so we have a social, which I missed uh, talking about. We've created a, uh, if you will, a set of banking services which are specially uh, you know, targeted towards the social entrepreneurs, both mm. in terms of providing a package which is suitable to them, but also at terms which is, uh, I would say, special for them. Right. And we have now close to 600 uh, social entrepreneur preneur companies and entrepreneurs who okay. bank with us across our different markets and they are the best examples of what has been our success. Alright on that note let's head into a quick break on the other side we will continue to explore why DBS Bank is one of India's most responsible companies stay with us. Welcome back to India's Most Responsible Companies. On the show today, we are exploring DBS Bank India, and I'm in conversation with the CEO of the bank, Surajit Shom. Surajit, uh, we were talking about the various social enterprises you've supported, and one of those is Even Cargo from New Delhi. Tell us a little bit about this venture, what caught your fancy, and uh, why, and how has it impacted the enterprise? Last year, we uh, started, or we evaluated uh, working with uh, Social Alpha, which is part of the uh, Tata Trusts, where they work with a broad, broad platform of social entrepreneur, entrepreneurs and enterprises. And uh, we chose three uh, social uh, entrepreneurs and social uh, enterprises to work with, and even Cargo was one of them, right. uh, which is really uh, uh, you know, providing gender diversity, but also employment opportunities for women. Right. And I think uh, this is a great example of that where uh, you are bringing people to come into the workforce from underprivileged women and then providing them livelihood to create uh, value for themselves but also value for the businesses that they work with. The association is still relatively new. Right. Uh, we started it uh, earlier this year and uh, over the next 18-24 months we'll work with them and hopefully we'll help them go to the next level. That's the plan. We have been able to train over 180 women till now and uh, 105 women uh, have got dignified employment uh, and we have also been able to create uh, asset for over 35 women. So on an average of women who is working as delivery associate with Even Cargo earns anywhere between uh, 12 to 15,000 working part time uh, for say 4 to 6 hours in a day. I want Even Cargo to be an organization which is driven by women. Uh, where jobs are not decided on the basis of gender. On the advocacy front, both internally and externally for DBS Bank, uh, you know, what are some of the most impactful initiatives that you take? Also, what are some of the collaborations that you have externally that really make this program successful? And internally, how do you motivate employees to sort of join hands with you? So let's talk about internally first. Uh, we have a very interesting program which uh, we uh, created about uh, two years back where we actually encourage our employees to take uh, two days off at the expense of the bank mm -hmm. and volunteer for whatever uh, they want to volunteer for. Uh, so we, we try and get uh, you know 60 to 70 to 80 percent of our staff to take that one to two days off and provide volunteer, uh, either in terms of mentorship to social enterprises, but could be something that they are doing themselves in their right. private time, they right. can take. Doesn't so have I, to be your uh, Doesn't have to be of one of them, but we also provide, if you will, uh, platforms. Mm. So either uh, departments or businesses then work with one of our social entre uh, entrepreneurs right. or with other areas 
where uh, large groups of people can go and volunteer. So that's a big part of, if you will, bringing our employees to provide volunteership. Hmm. The other is the mentorship program. Right. Wherever we're working with uh, social entrepreneurs, we have, for example, uh, two years back when we celebrated our 50 years, we had 50 social entrepreneurs from our six core markets who we selected yeah. and we provided them support. And out of India, we had 11. And for each of those, we had one senior uh, management committee member. I worked with one of those enterprises. My colleagues worked with them. And we had teams f who were self, uh, uh, you know, people who uh, volunteered time on their own right. and worked with each of these to bring them to the next level, either in terms of providing IT uh, support, financial uh, planning, or finance support. So that's how we bring uh, the employees to come into what we are trying to do. And that itself creates if you will, a broader uh, you know, engagement. Right. The other area that we do is uh, our Sparks program. So we are into our second series, and many of the uh, you know, short films that we do uh, are actually around the sustainability mm. agenda. So uh, in the first series, we had 10. Uh, nine and 10 actually were based on India, right. and we had Sachin Tendulkar uh, work with us, where we uh, lit or provided lighting to uh, 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 grounds for children to play in. And yes. as a part of that, we obviously made the film, but we also lit a uh, school ground in Mumra, uh, which uh, Sachin then kindly came and inaugurated. Great. So again, not only did we create advocacy in the broader communication sense, we actually created brick and mortar, if you will, solution to provide lighting right. to a ground in Mumra where people can come and now play. Uh, at night, which uh, which was actually quite uh, uh, well received. Wonderful. And what are your current CSR investments like? How have they grown over the last couple of years? And where would you like to take them for the next year? Yeah. So in in reality, we always spent more than uh, the two percent that uh, is mandatory. mandatory. In fact, actually, we started well before uh, the two percent mandatory limit came up. Yeah. Uh, even in years where we uh, were restructuring some of our books. Uh, we did not make enough profit, but we still spend well beyond that. Because we really think that the mandatory limit is a nice guidance, yeah. but uh, the broader program continues everywhere. So we think we'll continue to invest both from the foundation, but also from uh, the balance sheet of the bank, and as well from volunteering from uh, employees to have a broader program to continue to work with uh, mm -hmm. our uh, uh, social entrepreneurs. Do you think this whole uh, suggestion of uh, making it a criminal act if you don't invest X amount of money is a tad much? Yeah, I don't have a personal view on it, mm. but I would prefer that companies and businesses uh, do it on their own. Mm. Uh, they should be doing, and I think many companies, if not most companies, do it on their own. Uh, and hence, uh, it would be nice for companies to be doing it uh, of their own volition, which I think mostly they mostly do. Mostly they do. Right, so Sampoorn Earth is another social enterprise that manages your waste uh, here in Mumbai. Yeah. Tell us a little more about this enterprise and uh, how has it gained from your social enterprise support I, I think the best way to explain it is we did a very nice uh, short film which we put on our website where the young uh, team which put out, uh, made this uh, 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 social entrepreneurship uh, real was that how they brought people who were uh, uh, I would say marginalized employees or marginalized people into creating a solution to then take waste and create a business model out of it. Uh, so you have wasted which is a problem, you have unemployment which is a problem and then uh, you need to kind of uh, put them all together and I think Sampoorna did that very well. So we are actually quite proud not only to have worked with them but now to uh, uh, you know in fact be their, be their customer. <laughs> yes, great. Yeah. So finally, what is your long-term CSR vision for DBS Bank in India? What would you like uh, to do that you're not doing already? So I think as we have defined uh, for ourselves is that businesses uh, today need to have purpose which is well beyond just profitability. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there are a lot of problems around us. And uh, as a bank, as a development bank to start with, we were very closely involved with society itself, initially in Singapore, but in all the markets that we operate in. So we think that uh, businesses need to have the broader and higher purpose. Right. And we would continue to want to be a bank 
which not only has leadership position in our core business, core business, but also be able to give back and build something where we are connected back to society. And you're seeing that today among CEOs. Very recently, you saw leading global CEOs for the first time talk about the fact that shareholders were not the only stakeholders. Yeah. Companies and businesses need to exist to meet a broader set of stakeholder needs. And I think that's what uh, we would like to believe. As, as a bank, we'd like to be a bank which is not only good in what it does, but is actually for better, for a better world. So that would be our uh, real objective. Great. We wish you all the very best for that. Thank you very much for being with us on the show today. With that, it's a wrap of this episode of India's Most Responsible Companies. We'll be back next time with yet another inspiring corporate citizen that's doing business with a heart. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.